что, я думаю, можно начинать. Остальных там подождем. А, снова приветствую нашего старого доброго Джо. Он расскажет нам про мобильные тестирования. Аплодисменты. Можно. Thank you. Um, so this time I will talk about uh, my experience with mobile field testing. Okay. Um, and once again, I would like to know if you are also doing that. If you are doing mobile testing, yes? And field testing. Okay. What is field testing? I see some, some face. What is field testing? So field testing is when you grab your device and you go out. Okay, and that's when the fun starts. Yeah. Okay, instead of just staying in, you know, in the lab, in the control environment, is when you go outside. So I will tell you about my experience with field testing. I will tell you about one specific experience. So there is no right or wrong. It's just my experience. Okay, take it as it is. Um, no warranties. Okay. So first, I will explain a little bit about myself to give you some context. Okay, so I'm from Portugal. I did uh, introduce myself in the morning. I'm from, from that little piece of land over there, that corner. And amazing, uh, three or four weeks ago, I was in, in, uh, in Latvia. And I saw in the news that here in St. Petersburg, there was uh, this kind of uh, Oscars for uh, tourism. And Portugal won all, all of that. Uh, best destination, best cruise port, best beach destination, best island, best river cruise, best tourist development project. So if you don't know Portugal, you have lots of reasons to, to know that. Uh, everyone likes to, anyone likes to, to travel? Yeah? Good. Okay. So I've, I don't know if that is common or not, but I think most of the testers like to, to travel. Okay. So the good thing with the mobile field testing is that you can travel. That's, that's a good thing being a tester, is, is this type of uh, opportunities. So you have all these beautiful landscapes from, from Portugal, uh, all these good reasons to, to visit us. And about myself, so I start as a developer. Okay. I'm still a developer. Uh, so today I still like to, uh, uh, to write some code in Java and Perl. Perl is my favorite language. Uh, if you don't know that, you should know Perl. It's the only language where you can write poetry. Okay, so it's amazing. Um, but I also had different hats, like a technical uh, manager, project manager, and test manager. And um, this was managing teams between one person, okay, being that person myself, or 120 persons. I think it was the biggest team that I, I managed. Okay. Uh, so that gave me also a different context, different experience. But when I was challenged to be a test manager, I realized that to become a test manager, not a project manager that is managing testers, okay, that's something different. To become a real uh, test manager, I decided also that I need to become a tester. Okay, so for me, as a test manager, I believe that I should be able to walk the talk. Right? So to be able to test it myself. So I went through manual testing, uh, test automation, functional tests, uh, and also non-functional tests. So when we are talking about performance, security, usability, I did all of that. Yeah, I'm still doing all of that. And yeah, and the last one, I'm also enjoying my role as being an evangelist. So sharing my experience, sharing my experience with the, the, the community in Portugal, but also uh, uh, abroad. And that, that also helps me to travel. And uh, thank God I'm, I'm a tester. So this is my context. But the context for, for this project, for this experience, it's a little bit different. So I'm managing a team in Coimbra, uh, but it's spread all over the place. So we have, I have team members in San Diego, I have team members in uh, Manila and also in Pune. So before the daylight change, we had like one or two hours in the end of the day for the stand-up. And it was the only time of the year of the day where we could have everyone in a Skype call or in a conference call. Uh, right now, it's, it's impossible. 
so it's eight hours less in San Diego, and it's uh, already a new day for the rest of the guys. And this is just for the team, not for the, the, the customers. Okay, the customers, it's even worse because they are spread between New Zealand, uh, Kuwait, UK, Portugal, South Africa. So you can imagine, I have all the, all the time zones on my, on my mobile phone. And the app that I was testing, it's a mobile app, uh, iOS and Android, hybrid app, and it's for loyalty, for fast food restaurants. Okay, so in the old days, when you went to a restaurant, you got a stamp, right? And then after 10 stamps, you get the free meal. This is something similar like that, but in a mobile app. Okay, and to show you some different numbers, these numbers are for the last uh, 90 days. So you have the numbers about unique users in three uh, different countries. Uh, so the smallest one, the medium size, and in some countries we have almost three million of unique users in the last 90 days. Okay, so this is always counting. Uh, and the users, um, I already uh, some talks about these mobile users. There was a question in one of the previous talks. So the, the mobile users, they are quite demanding much more demanding than the, the type of users that we had in the past. So they have higher expectations, they have more demanding, and they are less patient. If the app is not responding for some reason, they will complain. But the problem is that they also have more power. They are, they are much more reactive, and they can go to the app store, and they can give one star. They cannot give zero stars, because one is the minimum. Okay. If not, they will give you zero stars. And sometimes they are not reasonable at all. Okay. Um, one of the, the examples that I have, it's one user that was complaining, imagine that this app was for McDonald's or Burger King. Okay. Imagine that it's for Burger King and the user complained, it's one star because the app does not work on McDonald's. You know, and you get a bad review. And the powerful is that if this app starts to receive lots of bad reviews, it gets out of the of the, the top in the market, and basically you are out of business. So that's the power of the, the these mobile users. Okay, they are more demanding, but they are much more powerful. So what was the challenge? So we had a new version of the app. Uh, it was tested by the internal QA team, it was tested by a crowdsource uh, testing team, and it was tested even by a non-professional tester uh, that was in the field. Okay, In the field, in this case, it was UK. So the, the guy was there on vacations, he worked for the company, and they just told him, okay, can you just go to a Burger King and run some tests? And say, yeah, okay. So all of this is good, right? We did it all. We follow the process. So the new app received the go from the QA team, the go from the product owner, go live. And dozens of bad reviews start to come in as soon as the app was released. Okay? And bad feedback was escalated. And you know, when it goes up, it goes fast. But when it comes down, it comes even faster, right? So this feedback went up to the CEO, and then it came down quite fast until the team. Uh, so we need to do something. And we, in, my, in this case, I was requested to do field testing. And this actually means receiving a phone call at 11 um, p.m. saying, oh, can you go to UK? Uh, for a, a couple of days to run some field tests. I said, yeah, okay, I will plan it and I will let you know. I said, no, no, can you go now? I said, yeah, it's 11 p.m., you know. I know that you are in the States, but in Portugal, it's night already. Uh, okay, when can you be there? So basically, at 2 a.m., I was packing my stuff, you know, waking my wife, saying, where, where do you go? 
uh, I go to UK to run some tests at two in the morning. You know, it's like going to buy a cigarette and then <laughs> don't return. Say, and you are telling me that now? I say, yeah, I found it some just one hour ago, so it's I'm going now. So at 5 a.m., I was in a plane to go to, to London for two days with a backpack with clothes for one week. Okay, lessons learned. So never pack just for two days. Always pack for, for more. So I went there and uh, we had some time to define the plan. Two weeks, that was my plan. So they only asked for two days, but I asked for a little bit more. A backpack with eight mobile phones. So you can imagine the fun in the airport, right? Oh, you need to take your device out. One phone, two phone, three, eight phones. So <laughs> you make a lot of phone calls. Um, and you know, with this face, eight mobile phones in a backpack in the, in the airplane, um, it could be <laughs> a challenge. So I had a map covering six different cities in the UK. Nice. I could choose the, the hotel. I choose a nice Hilton hotel to stay. It was my base center. 20 restaurants just in London, plus uh, three um, restaurants on the other main cities. Okay. Th that was the plan. Okay. It, does, it, it sounds good in the beginning. So the test case were defined, and for the plan was to go to each restaurant with four different devices. No, just go to a fast food restaurant, choose a table, put your four devices there, and start running the tests. And then go to the to the counter, buy one thing, go back to the to the table, run some more tests, and do that. So I need to buy four different things in the restaurant. Okay. Uh, no, I was not eating all the fast food. It was almost Christmas at that time, so lots of people in the street got some food. The ones that wanted to, to accept it. Uh, some just looked to me like strange, why are you offering food? Um, but that was the plan, okay? Uh, so lessons learned of this. So this was the, the plan and it was executed. Of course, nothing is perfect and I learned also something. Again, you know, I like disclaimers. So this is a specific environment, a specific context, okay? It, does, it doesn't apply to all the apps. Uh, it doesn't apply to different business areas. Uh, this was in a foreign country. So it implied also the, the travel and the, and the preparation. And it was for fast food restaurants, good and bad. So, and yes, it can be fun. And it was uh, lots of fun during these two weeks, traveling all, all over the, the place. Uh, but it's not as fun as doing field testing for this kind of stuff. Okay. I also did for for this. Uh, we did uh, command and control for the the boat, where you could test and you could control everything inside the boat from a small laptop. And the field testing was to be in a simulate war scenario in the in the sea. Okay, that's that's fun. Or the other one, uh, where you are also inside that in a, in a in a war simulated scenario, and it could be a lot of fun as you can imagine, driving in, inside that. Uh, or like these ones that I did to, to, to test the landing gear of, um, of a, a Boeing. All of these are quite funny and it, you, know, you can have more projects like satellites, all these fancy projects and you can get lots of fun. But in this case, it was just a mobile app. Okay, even so, as a tester, I try to, to enjoy what, I, what I'm doing. So I try to get some fun all, out of this. Uh, but again, just to remind you, don't apply this to all the apps and to all the business areas. So the first thing that I learned is that the, this mobile testing strategy, if you have a testing strategy for your mobile phones, you need to include also field testing. Okay? Because it's, it's where it will happen, right? And uh, even if you use crowdsource testing, sometimes that is just not enough. Okay, I will not go, go into details on this. If you want, you can ask me later. Uh, but sometimes it's not enough. So you need to use real device, real environment, and real users, or probably not. 
Okay. Probably you need some testers with some context. Because real users, most of the time, they just complain. They will not tell you useful information. Okay? It's failing. Why? Because I'm in a restaurant that does not accept this app. Okay? So that's not useful at all. So you need more information when the things go wrong. And the testers know that. So lessons learned. Uh, plan time to commute. And I failed that. I planned everything, but I forgot the time that I need to go from one restaurant to the other. Okay. It's quite important to plan that. And it's quite important to optimize your bet. So you know the place that you need to visit, you need to plan that to optimize, to reduce the, the non-productive time, the time that you are spending traveling from one side to the other. But you also need to plan time to report. In the end of the day, I was in the in the hotel, tired, you know, and I still need to report. I still need to 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 give all that information back to the team to fix the issues that I found, and of course I also need time to rest. Okay. I, I walked a lot during these two weeks. I had a backpack with eight phones, and at certain points all of them were vibrating and giving me rewards. You know these Samsung apps. When you give so much steps during one day, they will tell you, great, you achieved your, your, uh, uh, your next level, 1,000 steps, 10,000 steps. And all the eight phones were complaining about that. So prepare your test data. When you go out, you are in the field. You don't have so much time. Right? So you need to prepare everything in advance. You need to, to have all the users. In this case, we created more than 100 different test accounts for Facebook using a predefined format. So I always knew what user accounts I would need to use for that specific restaurant, and I prepare all of that in advance. And also prepare and study your test case. You don't want to go to the restaurant. It's already strange to be there with uh, the eight phones. You don't want to read your steps, right? You need to, to, to know the steps before. So you just go there and you've done it. Uh, and prepare also steps for evidence, right? If you miss something, you cannot just go there next day. So you need to, to include steps for this. And in our case, what we did was to include steps, for example, to take a screenshot of, on the, the map showing I'm in this uh, in this restaurant. So I will start the test on this restaurant at this time. And this was also quite useful because I could use this to report okay, what restaurant, at what time, and everything after that in the log files, in the server, in the app, had the, 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 the timestamp. So it was easier for, for the developers also to track my, my steps. What else? Execution. So execution details are, are relevant. Okay. As a tester, sometimes we see something that looks strange. It's like the, you know, the smell, the, the smoke, right? Smoke test. When you see something strange, we need to try to understand that. Sometimes the users will see something strange. Oh, what, what happened? I don't know. Let's try again. Oh, it worked. OK, no problem. Okay. If you see that, you need to be curious, you need to research, because if it failed for some reason at first, it could be some problem. So you need to understand what, what is that. You need to research for more details. Okay? You need to try to understand why it failed at first. And get ready with some power banks. Okay? When you, uh, you stay one, one, one day out, um, you need to be fully operational, right? You cannot just close the day because you run out of power. And uh, you also need to have comfortable clothes, of course, depending on the weather. In this case, it was England. It was raining. Uh, so it needs to be all the, all the weather. Get ready for fast food all the day. Even if you are not eating that, uh, to be in a fast food restaurant first thing in the morning is not best place to be, right? When you have all these french fries at uh, 9 a.m., <laughs> it's, not, it's not what you want for breakfast. And get ready for these extra steps. 
and get ready to explain what you are doing, right? Unless you want to have some problems, <laughs> someone calling the security, be ready to explain why you are there, what you are there, and why you are buying a lot of food, and then throwing away a lot of food, okay? Um, so you need to, to explain all of that. So what was the issue? The main issue and the reason why I went to, to UK to do this, uh, actually it was a simple one, and it was found right in the beginning. Okay? So after the, visiting the first four restaurants, I spotted. Do you know these captive portals? Do you know what it is? No? You know these free networks that you, you, you can access to the internet for free, but before that you need to just give your... Uh, consent or give your email and then say, okay, I accept that you send me some, some spam, right? And then it's free. The problem is that for some configuration, for some networks, the device believes that is already vulnerable. Okay? How this, uh, this works? It depends on the Google. It, it is different from Google uh, or from Android and iOS. But basically, it's, the device tries to call uh, um, a server. In, this, in the case of Android, it, try, it tries to call um, a, a Google server. The problem is that some of these networks allow you to go to Google without registry. So you can search without giving your data. But as soon as you try to get out of that, so you, if you click on one link, you will say, oh, now you need to give me your email. Okay, so the, the phone was connecting to the Google uh, servers and says, okay, we are online, ready to go. Next call was to our backend, to our API, to get data. And instead of getting a JSON file, it was getting an HTML page saying, please provide your uh, email address. But at that point, the app was not expecting that because from the app point of view, as far as the app knows, Everything was okay, and we had internet. So that was the problem, okay? And we could find, just in, in one shopping mall, more than nine different configurations for these types of uh, captive portals, okay? So that was the, the, the main issue. A simple one, as soon as we identified. Um, of course, there, the, there were also some bad network conditions and we also improved the app to handle that, but th that was the, the, the main issue, okay? So as soon as this was sold, happy again, okay? And this was my experience with two weeks in, in uh, England, so I think we still have time. This time, we have some, some minutes for questions, okay? Да, у нас осталось минут 15 на вопросы, так что можете задавать. So, um, did you get to ride the boat and to control it? Like, you, know, you said that you was you were still testing um, an app for, not an app, but a thing for Battleship. Did you manage to fiddle with it, like? So for the, the boat? Mm, yes. <laughs> uh, like the steering or maybe turn some cool things, guns. Yeah. Yeah, of course, this this is fun, okay? The, the problem with this, and I always get this, this question, because all these projects, they, they are also quite quite fun, right? Uh, and we all, always uh, learn new things, new context. Um, the problem with this is that most of these systems, they are not safety critical, but they are mission critical, right? And it means that they are not using the latest technologies. So I cannot say much about this, but I, I can tell you, for example, about this one. And in this one, we used model-based testing. Okay. So model-based testing, if you know it, it's not really fun. Okay. So basically, for this, we spend our days just working with Excel. Okay, it's not so fun, right? <laughs> so my work was mainly to search and replace strings in an Excel file, in the comments, in the formulas, in the values, 
and even on the VB script. So all of these projects, they look quite nice, quite fancy, but I really prefer the enterprise world. So, and the things that you can do on this one, usually you are not allowed to do much. Okay? For example, once I was doing, I was responsible for the um, ground station for the American uh, presidential helicopter for, for Obama. And then financial crisis and the project was stopped, but I was responsible for that. And I was not able to get even near the helicopter. Okay? Not even the project manager was able to, to know what was inside the helicopter. So I was on the same base in Lockheed Martin in the States, but inside the base there was an hangar. Inside the hangar there was a bubble zone, and inside the bubble zone there was the helicopter. Okay. So the nearest that I could get to the helicopter, it was inside that, uh, inside the hangar, uh, inside the, the base, not in, even inside the hangar. Okay. So most of these projects you only see part of it for security reasons. Okay. So it's fancy, it's nice to have it on TV, most of the times it's not so fun. Okay, okay thank you. Is your opportunity good? Yeah. Ah, Pierre. Okay, so uh, she asked, uh, how, <laughs> <laughs> how did you uh, choose the phones for the testing okay. when you have been in Britain? And, yeah. and how many models of phones, types of phones, okay. it's enough? Okay, so, you know, um, Pareto analysis, Right, the 8020. So that's why we, that's how we, we choose them. Okay. So we look to the data analytics, and we identified the most used device in this case. So we identified the eight device uh, that will cover 80% uh, of the of the users. In most of the case is like is like that. So we can take all of the device, but to cover the other 20%, it will require another 20 devices. Okay, so it's impossible to, to cover all of them. Okay, these 8020 can also be used to, to for the test case. It's the same. And do you know pairwise? Pairwise technique. It's it's a technique to, to that you can use to to improve that coverage even even more. So usually uh, I see pairwise applied to the uh, data variables but it can also be used to scenarios like this, where you have different combinations and you need to reduce the number of options. Okay? So to optimize your coverage, your environment, you can also use pairwise. And I don't see it so, uh, applied so, much, so, so frequently, but it's also an option. Thank you. What is wrong? Добрый день. Какие условия для тестирования, так скажем, филда вы считаете наиболее опасными и как вы считаете, ну, выбираете эти опасные условия по каким критериям? So everything is clear. You can answer no? in Russian, please. Можешь раз повторить? I can try with in Portuguese. Uh, which conditions of field testing are dangerous? Mm -hmm. and how uh, do you understand which one is dangerous? Okay, the conditions are dangerous for me, for myself, the person as a tester? For the process of testing. Oh, for the process of testing. Well, it really depends on, on the app. In this case, um, there is no, there was not so much danger involved. Okay, so the, the only thing that was dangerous was the fast food. That <laughs> was not so healthy. And I need to, to buy that during one week. I don't know if I got the answer right or the, the question. No? It was the translator. Uh, 
uh, you mean maybe geolocation? Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Type okay. VPN or maybe time. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um, well, we, we knew the requirements from the app. So the app needs to be online and, uh, 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 and it needs to use also the location service. So when we choose the, the, the restaurants, we also try to, to, to look for restaurants where the users were reporting more problems or where we knew that we will exercise some, some um, limit conditions. Like in one of the, the shopping malls, the network was so bad that if I moved one step to the side, I was offline, you know? And uh, I was in the queue, another step, and I was online. I was trying to, uh, to use the app, another step, and offline again. So it depends on the requirements. In our case, it was Wi-Fi, and it was GPS. Uh, so it was the, the location, the assisted GPS. Um, so it, it basically depends on, on, on that. Okay? Um, some things you cannot control. For example, if you don't have GPS signal, you know that the phone itself will try to identify where you are using the network cells. In New Zealand, we have one network cell that is not properly uh, set up. And whenever the user gets connected to that network cell, uh, he's refused to, to do anything in the app because the app says that he's in the middle of the ocean. That's the, the coordinates uh, uh, that he's receiving. So you cannot control everything. Um, but it really depends on the, on the conditions on, on, on your app. It depends what your app needs to use. Okay? Um, other things you need to, to, to take care, uh, and some things you don't even think about it. For example, power, uh, the, 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 the processing capacity on your device. Okay. Did you ever shake your your uh, desktop while you are testing a web page? That's stupid, right? You don't do that. But you know what is the fastest way to generate load, CPU load on your device? Shaking it. Yeah, because you know your device has a lot of different sensors, right? And when you shake it, that gets crazy. So it starts to generate a lot of signals, lots of data, and the, 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 the processor just goes up. So that's one easy way to test your app under some stressful uh, conditions. Okay. Other things that you, you can take care, usability, uh, you know, accessibility also. So if you are outside, uh, if it's an app that you will use outside, if you can read it while the sun is, um, is um, over your head, or if it's just inside the building. So you need to, to take care of all of that, but it really depends uh, on your app, on your use case. So there is no one size fits all. Okay. That's better? No, we, we have a few minutes. Yeah. Только по-английски, я вас, ум... я вас умоляю. <laughs> hey, um, do you use something special app uh, for mobile testing? Or tools, maybe? Like tools, besides Robo. You already understood that I love, I love that. Um, so I do use specific tools. Okay? Because today I'm doing mobile tests. Tomorrow I will be doing something else. So instead of learning a specific tool, I, I prefer to use a, a framework. Uh, so we use um, Robo framework that behind the scenes will use uh, Appium or, and also Selenium because uh, we are also testing uh, web pages that, that, that need to be uh, used in the device. Um, but besides that, of course, we have tools for uh, video recording. Uh, we have tools. Uh, we have uh, a lab with a real device. Uh, that uh, that uh, we, we built with a uh, Selenium grid um, uh, in front. So we just run our automated tests against this grid and we can select what device we use. Um, other than that, 
some tools for uh, VPNs uh, because sometimes you need to, to pretend that you are in a specific geolocation and having a, a VPN for a specific country helps with that. And I think that's, that's it. So we also try to avoid having more tools in the device. So we only have the tools that we believe we really need because as soon as you are bringing something into the device, you are changing your test environment, right? So, so it's always a balance that you need to, to take care. You should have already built. Hi. Um, yeah, I have a small question. Um, so, for example, if you have uh, a software which is used worldwide, mm -hmm. like in 40 countries, for instance, and you have to <laughs> perform <laughs> this field testing and yeah. you don't have enough resources, human, yeah. whatever, yeah. financial, uh, how would you choose um, a place, a location to do it? Well, it depends on the photos. <laughs> <laughs> uh, depends on the time of the year. No. Um, well, depends on the... Uh, where is it? I show you that in the beginning. So these numbers are from three different countries. If I tell you choose one country to test, what country you will choose? This one, right? Yeah, the third one. Because you can see the difference. So how do you choose what to test in testing in general? Risk, right? Risk-based testing. So my first choice will be risk. Okay. If I'm allowed to choose, I choose the country. If not, I will choose by, by the, the risk for, for the business. Yeah, in, in your case, it's probably dependent on the quantity of users or yeah. potential users, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. see, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Talk to you also do. Hello. Hi. You said that the problem was in captive portals. Yeah. But it looks like this is is a problem not for your particular application, but general problem. What? Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it's true, uh, but you, you don't control everything, so we cannot control the the way that these captive portals are set up, right? Uh, when you connect your Windows laptop, you, you will also connect to a captive portal. Yeah. Yeah, but but it means that all other applications will have the same problems for. Well, potential, yeah, potential. yeah it, it depends on the approach that they use. So if they use an approach that will prevent that, and our approach was quite simple. So instead of trusting the, the information from the device, because that's what most of the apps uh, answer, uh, we run a second call, and that, that takes time. So we have a performance impact there. But basically, if the device tells us, I'm online, then we run a first check to, the, to our servers, and only if the response is what we are expecting, then we say we are good to go. Okay? So that's a simple approach that uh, we implemented. Other apps that use a similar approach, they will work. Uh, other apps, they will not work. And that's why you see a lot of apps in the, in the stores with, with problems. Okay? Regarding the previous question, one option is also to use crowdsource testing. Okay, we can use that to lower the, the, the costs and to increase the, the coverage. Anyone is working for crowdsourcing? Crowdsourcing testing? Yeah? Okay. So, that's, it's, it's not bad. Okay, don't, don't, don't get me wrong. <laughs> uh, the problem is that what happens if you don't find a bug in the end of the day? Nothing special, right? You go home, right? If I don't find a bug in the end of the day, and if the end users find a bug, I get a phone call. Okay? So that's the difference, is the motivation, it's the context. So I'm I'm committed, you know, the chicken and the the the, the, the pig, right? The eggs and the bacon. Right, uh, also the crowdsourcing testing they only provide the eggs, but the guys in the team, the QAs in the team, they have the bacon there, <laughs> you know. So they are really committed with the game. So that's why I always prefer to have also, if possible, financial possible, if it's possible to have 
someone from the team that knows the context and that will search for the details for if something goes wrong. I always prefer to have someone from the team. Thank you. Все, уважаемые коллеги, закончилось время. Жо, прошу любить и жаловать. Поблагодарим нашего гостя.